everybody, and welcome back to the 2022 LCS Spring Proving Ground, powered by Verizon. After a great 2-0 series to start off the day, we're starting to look towards the second match and maybe get a couple more predictions right here, Tim, because Mad Magical's not starting this one out great. Yeah, I appreciate that uh, that Magical took on the curse a little bit there because, yeah. <laughs> you know, both it was a 2-0 instead of a 2-1 and my prediction was look, correct. Magical was the one that got the prediction look, wrong. So, look, you know, look, look, I am I am a bold person. I am not a coward and I will go with what the heart says. And the heart told me that Immortals had a miracle run in them. But I guess I just underestimated the Chad buff when it comes to Proving Ground. <laughs> so I'm... kind. Taking on the old title and you're five years younger than I am. Oh my goodness, you guys. I mean, at this point now, Taco Gaming taking a loss means that we've yet to see a amateur be able to take this series. So we're going to have to look at the bracket for what's next. See if Evil Genius's Academy, if this could be the chance, this could be the opportunity to see a team be able to have this title eg prodigies apologies yeah let, let's see if they can do it it's going to be like every every time an amateur team pretty much is coming up against academy team it's it's a stiff test and yeah. uh you know this is the the next contender up uh egp has some really exciting young players just just like taco did and we'll have to see what they can what they can pull out uh but it's again going to be another you know david versus goliath i think yeah, for sure. And then looking over at the roster for EGP, who is someone that you're, we've always got our eye on one person. Who is it that you're really looking for to be making a stand in this match to try and get Amateur their first series win? Yeah, I think uh, out of Faisal, Perry, uh, Leo, Brady, and, or sorry, Ske Sketch and Daption, um, there's, yeah, I guess he's going by Brady now. Uh, <laughs> there's there's one player who really stands out to me, which is Faisal in the top lane. I think he's, he's, uh, pretty clearly the best player on the team and, and one who probably could be competing with Academy top laners right now. Uh, eyes are definitely going to be on him. He's an interesting player to check out because despite being a, a really solid, you know, strong point on their roster, EGP don't necessarily play through his lane in the early game. They tend to path more into the bot side, play there and kind of leave him in his 1v1. Uh, so we'll have to see kind of how they end up using him in this series. And he's got a, a pretty tough matchup in his lane. Yeah, he definitely does because going up against this gta roster i mean they've got their work cut out for them isn't that isn't that right here magical oh yeah for sure because this is a team that was contesting the top of the standings in academy this is a team that we look at even though you know they fell a little bit short there at the end because violet now back onto the roster they had played with six day for so long but you look at this entire team and you talk about faisal i'm looking at tony top as well that's going to be yeah. one hell of a duel between the two top laners because that's going to be so exciting. So it's exciting too because yeah. both of these teams actually kind of prefer to play towards this bottom side of the map. Even though I know this clip is a is a top lane gank. Okay, look, top lane. It's not the uh, it's not the uh, island it is in solo queue. Junglers definitely show their face there. But the idea I'm more going towards is that I mean, with Violet coming onto the roster here for GGA, it hasn't really changed their identity of playing more towards the bottom side of the map. And Tim already pointed it out. EGP are the same way. So I have a feeling you know, we are going to get a lot of that one on one action in the top side. And, and if that's what ends up happening, I'm really curious to see what GGA do for the draft with Tony, because uh, he's really well known and like like classically goes back to like the Fiora Camille style of champion. Uh, and if and if they are planning to play to bot side and they know if they feel like EGP is going to do the same, and, and if they do attack EGP in the draft and bot lane attack them with their pathing, does Tony take out something like the Fiora and just try to crush one v one? I've got a I've got a Tony Top solo kill as a slot on my bold predictions bingo card. True. So you know I, I you know I'm, I'm kind of rooting for that to happen because I want to fill out some more squares there. But um, you know I can't wait to see if that's what they end up doing or if uh, if it ends up being played through mid lane, bot lane. GG I can play through any part of the map for sure. I love on the player card how it's like Tony Top predicts for you know which top laner he thinks is best. You know that's where the focus is on the match, and we're going up against a great top laner as well in Faisal. If we take a look at these clips, I would I would love him if you could give us your spin on this. Yeah, well, like I said, I think Faisal is is the the best player on his team. I think he has a really good gangplank that for some reason they don't bring out that often. Uh, but I believe if I'm remembering correctly, he's 3-0 on Gangplank and has only died like once or in those three games or something. Uh, but he also plays the tanks, the bruisers. He's definitely more of a carry player. Uh, he'll, he'll play kind of the Camille, the Gwen, and so on. But uh, 
you know, it, it, again, there could be a real opportunity for him to try to bring something uh, kind of bold into Tony and, and try to win that 1v1, or maybe he'll kind of play for the team a little bit more. We'll have to see. Well, in this battle for Golden Guardians Academy up against Evil Geniuses Prodigies, we got to make our predictions. This is a chance for Matt Magical. This is a time for you to redeem yourself a little bit. But, Tim, I want to hear from you first. How do you think the series is going to be ending up? Yeah, I think Academy is in the advantage here and is going to continue that way. I think GGA are, are too flexible. Uh, I think they're going to win this series 2-0. All right, be done. I agree with Tim. I think, uh, I think there's a... Even though I think EGP are quite good, there is just going to be a difference here in this game. I also think it's GGA 2-0. All right. Magical, all eyes on you now. You're the only one who was wrong last time. Uh, Which way do you think it's going to go? Hearing your predictions makes me want to change my predictions last minute. <laughs> because I hate unanimous decisions, but I have to join the crowd on this one. I think it's going to be a 2-0 for Golden Guardians. I think that Golden Guardians... <laughs> Are a really good team, really solid. Tony Top, looking at him, even looking at Chime and Ryoma. These are players Insane. that tend to go under the radar with how good they are. In fact, Chime was one of my players that I really voted for, for how well he improved just in this year alone. Well, I kind of regret um, poking fun of you now a little bit because looking across the board, I'm the only one who differed from the norm, thinking mm -hmm. this is going to be a 2-1 series. We're going to have to see, though, how it's going to shake up, see if Evil Gene's Prodigy can stand up against the monsters that is Golden Guardians Academy. It's time to let you two casters take it away with the game. We'll catch up with you later. Well, thank you again, Sierra and Tim. We'll see you later after the break. After this first game, it is our second Best of three for the day beat down. And between Golden Guardians Academy and Evil Geniuses Prodigies, we all pretty much predicted Golden Guardians Academy. But instead, I yeah. want to flip the script on you oh. going into this draft. What do you think are ways Evil Geniuses Prodigies can take this series? Okay, I, I don't know why. I, when you said flip the script, I thought you were going to be like, I lied to you, beat down 2 0 EGP. And I was going to be like, oh my God, Alex, uh, you're crazy. You I, I won't turn. If I. Submit my predictions. I will stand by them. Good man. So unfortunately, I put those out already, and I'm like, now I wish I had put EGP. But either way, okay. question still stands. Yes. So EGP, what they need to do to really get this one going? I think the thing is, with how many, the fact is one, I think banning a rise is absolutely one of the biggest things there. Ryoma's rise is absolutely insane. And it was correctly highlighted when we were uh, with the four of us talking about it in the pre-show, just how good oh. he is. And we could see, I mean, we might see him with the Kai'Sa. The thing is, we are seeing Kai'Sa pop up a little more, not just in mid, but in bot because of the right. changes to some of the hyper carry he carries, the nerfs to Jinx, the nerfs to Aphelios. So this could be a Kai'Sa bot, but I have a feeling it's going to be Ryoma Pile in the mid lane that's what i think as well mm -hmm. i'm looking at how this i mean i look at ryoma he's played so many different games this guy has an ocean yes. in mid lane so it would not surprise me at all to have that kaisa and i expect the kaisa to go mid lane but then i see the zeri on the other side and what i've been seeing is a trend to pick kaisa bot lane into zeri because kind of like with tristana you're not going to get punished too much early on for the lack of range you tend to have could actually utilize that and it is going to be kaisa bot because that is a yasuo okay yeah I, I was immediately as soon as i saw the the um diana i'm like okay that has to be kaisa bot just because no junk no uh mid jungle cc is definitely a no-no here but seeing it ryoma pilot the yasuo i love it you love to see it and that is going to be a really exciting thing to watch because not only does that combo work out really nicely you also get the kaisa follow-up with that killer instinct there so already big burst damage big team fighting angle in the mid and late game there for gg and then on the other side it is a blind renekton or is because this is where I'm looking at EGP and the advantages that they can get. And one mm -hmm. of them I was thinking was their champion selection. Mm -hmm. Having talked with both Harry and Leo for the in the lab segment that I did earlier, these are players that aren't afraid to play things that are off meta. Perry loves True. his cane. That's one of his best champions that he tends to play out of po uh, pocket, kind of like Trickster. But Leo likes a lot of AD mid. He does. Especially looking at the Draven and Ezreal. But. Renekton is one of those picks that we used to see all of the time, especially against Yasuo. Yeah, exactly. That is an interesting thing. The thing is, the reason I'm a little doubtful of that is because it, it was highlighted by Tim when we were doing the pre-show. You don't see a lot of uh, priority given over there to Files on the top lane. Even on red side, very often you'll see them pick 
Faisal's champion for him very early on, but seeing the Jace ban, seeing the Camille ban, maybe they do have something else in store. We've seen Faisal play things like the um, the Trindamir, but I think at this point, if that does end up being that Renekton mid, you're going to need some sort of magic damage on the squad, right. otherwise you're going to be all AD. That's what I was looking at as well. So Zeri, Viego, and Renekton. I'm pretty sure that you're right. It is going to be that Renekton top side, so you can get more AP in mid lane, especially yeah. for Leo. Unless they want to pull out something really, really spicy for us. If they want to see if they can go for maybe... Okay! Speaking of uh, spicy... That's spicy. Yeah. You, spicy you, right there. You know what that's nice, too? Because the thing with uh, Renata is that what, what makes her pretty nice for the all-in, the ult is nice. That's all well and good. But the thing for me, it's the bailout. That ability to, if you get a kill after dying you get those extra few seconds of life you get a chance to come through oh my god wait a minute ap top kennen uh, yeah, never yeah, mind yeah, everything yeah. i'm saying yeah, that yeah, makes the yeah. most sense i actually think kennen is really good right now yeah. and he's criminally underplayed so i think that would actually be that nice pick to get oh, you that good it. matchup it is going to be locked in for faisal in the top lane i haven't seen him play the kennen in the in the time i've been watching him he's so down. that's going to be a really exciting one i know talk he's to me down. magical talk I'm to me big brain yeah i'm big brain you're right i reacted mid lane i can't believe that I actually ended up working yeah. i was thinking you know at what what top laner can you play that or ap i was I thinking, was thinking you know, that too you've, yeah you've you've seen rise flex up <sighs> there before Tannen was coming to my mind but i was like okay maybe not necessarily against tony top champion pool then he blinds nar and again i will say it many many times i'm not a fan of blind nar yeah. for this reason once i saw that nar locked in i'm like cannon's got to be blocking right mm -hmm. hey, that's all ulti the ultimate flex you don't want to put that renekton against the nar you want that renekton to be against yasuo it's a win-win across the board for EGP with that pick. It is. It is really nice there. I like that draft adaption coming through from EGP and actually giving that priority to Faisal, given throwing up the bait that is the Renekton to get a better idea of what we're seeing in the top lane. Of course, now that they know Sonar, they know that this cannon's going to work out really well. I like this because the one, you do have that early laning power, both mid and top, because cannon's actually quite strong in lane. He did get buffed on this patch as well got some early damage and things like that so the thing is with this priority it is going to allow parry to move around the map a little easier we saw how important that was in game two of taco gaming against imta the viego did manage to be very aggressive in the early game that was trickster of course the end of that game don't worry about that magic i'm talking about the early game that's the thing here and against the diana you are going to have a lot of chances to really pressure her in the earlier parts of this game and that's what i want to see from egp going forward and that's why i'm looking at leo to dominate this mid matchup and then on the other side, looking at EG, uh, not EG, EGP is the one we were talking about. Looking at GGA's there you go. composition, that Renata. The Renata is what yes. kind of makes me actually not so sure mm -hmm. about Evil Genius uh, Prodigy's composition. That's fair. Especially as we load up onto the Rift for our second best of three in our day. This is the first day of double eliminations. One amateur team has been knocked down into the lower bracket, and EGP would like not to join. Now, early game, not a whole lot is going to happen. Everyone's just going to go ahead and five points. And I mean, I'm really looking at the mid laners now in this game, just because Rioma is a player hyped up, not just by us today, even on the Academy broadcast from everything I've seen. And even the times in the PGCQ1, when Golden Guardians Academy actually did attend, he was a very standout player, both him and Chime. And seeing Chime on this pick, where he's on something a little different, some a player who, of course, is really good with the engaged champions, who's really good with things like the Blitzcrank, if you give him the opening to take it, now he's going to be on the Renata Glass. And the point I was making before I got really excited by the Kennen was that I, I like it in this one because I actually like Renata in terms in all-in compositions, where you're all going in, you're trying to dive, yeah. you're trying to get kills, because getting that second chance with the bailout is... Is a really big deal here you throw it on Rayoma, you throw it on iconic they get those few seconds of life to bring themselves back in you can get a little more aggressive and go for these trade kills that actually deny goals from the enemy plus uh, there's a reason why i was even talking about the run out of glass as well uh, it's looking at the composition it, for both sides very low range on both yeah. sides not really gonna have that much to wiggle room to kind of get around right. that smoke and mirrors that Renato will put down and make you attack your own teammates everyone like you talked about they're gonna be tight quarters fighting that's also true of golden guardians which works more into the hand of chime 
It, it does, and I agree with you. The thing is, that's why I like this Kennen pick, though, because you get into this position where you want to fight in the same areas where Golden Guardians do, and it is definitely going to come down to a little bit of finessing from either side to get over the top here, but Faisal, being that player we keep highlighting for great performances on things like Gangplank, Camille, things like that, now he has a chance to show us his Kennen because a lot is going to be on him to close the gap, set things up for this composition, because like you said, melee low range ad carry even low range range top lane are coming through that slicing maelstrom is going to make a lot of the difference here if they want to overcome gga all right so pause is still in effect right now everyone just kind of giving some heads up what's going on i'm trying to get some word see what is happening from our player side hopefully we'll find out very shortly because it's a little bit more time because this is a, not like I don't even think it's a bad draft. It's just an unusual draft yeah. from both teams. With the Diana Yasuo, we've seen this before from Iconic and Ryoma back at the beginning of Academy Split. But also looking over to the side of EGP with Kennen, with the Renekton mid. And looks at that. As I was talking about it, finding out what's going on with the players, if they're almost ready. Looks like we, we have heard word that we're getting close to diving back onto the rift. You, it's like the opposite of a curse magically you brought it up and now we're going back into the game it's like it's like a blessing not just yet not just yet oh cool we will my we first. will oh okay yeah. Uh, yeah yeah is it the tea of good luck the the tea of blessing what do we what do we got uh, going on this here? one's actually of longevity so I see. hopefully yeah yeah it's like a, a ginger black tea with uh some honey in it wow so because you're because you are getting old so you know longevity is very important there i take it i see how it is <laughs> anyways let's get back into this game Let's talk about Golden Guardians Academy and Evil Geniuses Prodigies. Right now, line of scrimmage set up by both teams. Boo! I mean, okay, yeah, cool. Yes, I know magical. You want the you want the mad plays. You want everything to happen right away early. Bananaganneries. What is it? What's that? Bananaganneries. Is that a word? Yes. Can you spell that? Uh S H E N I Oh, shenanaganneries. Is that what you said? Yes, oh, okay. All right, I got you. Yeah, okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up what you're laying down. I got no, you. it wasn't an I. It was an A. Ah, N you were close. I G E R I yes. And again, Reese. That is correct. Uh, I don't know. Don't correct me, Twitch chat. <laughs> no, I, did, I swear to God. <laughs> I was trying to do the whole spelling bee thing. Like that's correct. Anyways, back onto the rift. Right now, we have both junglers starting off on the top side of the hat map. Iconic and Perry will butt heads at some point. But looking at how Diana wants to play this out, you really do want to get that Moonfall, the, uh, have the tandem play that you can work with Ryoma. Yeah, level six is definitely when things really start to go in the favor of GG, and at least in these earlier parts of the game. And that's why champions like Diana, usually pretty vulnerable during the first and second clear where they get to levels five and six. So that could be the opening parry might be looking for, but it depends. Again, we, we talk about how Leo went for this counter matchup with the, the Renekton into the Yasuo. Now he's fighting for that mid push and hoping that he can get ahead. So parry will be able to move freely, maybe go for the invade. We already are seeing pings come through about Iconic's location. And look at how Leo is playing at the moment. Even though it is going to be the wave crashing towards him, got a good trade on Ryoma. Plus, he went for TP over the Ignite. So you could always try to dominate this lane as right there, Perry attempted to play into the bot lane. They even used the hat splash from Dapshin to get that. It just didn't land, so they have to bail out. Oh, the Ignite. Okay. Oh, okay, oh, Leo. Leo. What a way and to start leveled. off his I, proving grounds. Yeah. No, he actually survived because he leveled up. That was almost a one for one trade, and that is unreal. We talked about it the mid matchup being so important. It means that Iconic, he already knows. Yeah, that's not my scuttle crap. I'm just going to reset. Wow. I want to see a replay of that. Me too. Just because Leo, this new mid laner, taking it to the face of Ryoma, a tested player in Academy. We've seen him before in the proving grounds. And this has been a player that has had one of his best splits in this previous spring split. Agreed. So for Leo to not only take the Renekton against that Yasuo on the other side, but then get a solo kill onto him at level one is absolutely insane. Go to the bot lane and put that on pause. Do you have a bit of fight? Uh -oh. A lot of damage on adaption. That's going to be a kill for Chime, and now it is going to be sketched in a little bit of trouble. They've been bullying oh, all no. lane long with that exhaust coming out too. Sketch is taken low, but he'll jump over the wall to survive. 
Oh, that did not work out the way Daption and Sketch were hoping for here. The ranged poke coming through from Chime and Violet together did end up taking him down. It cost a lot of summoners, but Violet will hold on to his flash, crucially. And Sketch had to blow his. So now that leaves him open to, for the next couple of minutes if Myconic does want to show up. Because I did say Diana is a little vulnerable early on, but like Hecarim, like those other hard farming junglers, there are windows before level six where you are able to make plays. Iconic might be able to find something like that. Otherwise, he's just going to continue farming it away. Yeah, it's honestly just looking at how the map state is at the moment. Well, you have the mid lane working out well for evil prodigies. That bot lane is going to be concerning. You have to try to get that out of this dicey situation they've found themselves in. Especially because Sketch, even though he didn't die, was forced out of lane. He's down 11 CS to Violet early on in the game without any summoners to his name. So I gotta put, again, I'm on pause. Top lane, having a bit of a skirmish between Faisal and Tony Top. Both of them want to make that name for themselves. We've seen Tony Top do it in the past. But Faisal, you got low there, got a bit dicey and a little risky as Zapchen. Wow, I, I can't just toss you, can I? No. They just constantly want to fight. Yeah, but isn't that what you want? Isn't that is the ideal situation? Yeah, but I like, to, I like to have a conversation. Okay. With you. Now, I enjoy our Thank time. You. It's been a while since you and I got a cast together, so I actually enjoyed the time we get to spend together. Oh, you know what? I do too, Magical. I'm so glad you feel the same. And now... Hey, let's go. <laughs> that's right. We're already seeing Chime having that impact roaming. Of course, did pressure Daption just a little bit, prevent him from setting a vision. And now, Leo, bit of that oh, XP thanks. lead. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Got a lot of damage there on Ryoma. The TP, I mean, not TP, the Ignite will be available for Ryoma soon. But we already saw before how difficult it is to kill that Croc. With him being level 6, it's going to be even harder. But here's Perry. Bot oh, lane, and I kind of had to ask for this. I wanted to play in the bot lane. Coming in from EGP, and that certainly is what they've got. With the bailout, not in time for the kill to revive. So instead, it will be the turnaround fight. Iconic running into the enemy jungle. The flash coming in from Leo to set up kills. For Perry or for Sketch, it Beautiful. will be Leo who takes it for himself. And this is what he's been doing. So he's been having such a big impact in this game. Solo killing Ryoma, getting that push so that he can leave, get that first move to be a part of that bot lane play. He does lose a little bit for it, but I think it's worth it because he's coming back to lane with the Dominus in hand if he really wants to get it. excited. Yeah, he didn't even use Oh my god. Leo right now. Jeez, he is playing out of his mind. The first game we get to see him in the Proving Grounds itself. Not in the qualifiers, That's not right. in the open circuit. This is his first showing for us against Academy. And it's not against just any <laughs> Academy player. It's against Ryoma, who I already That's said before. Right. He's been one of the best performing Academy mids. And Leo is taking him to church. <laughs> That's right, he is. It's been a good game so far for Evil Genius Prodigies, and they need to keep it up. We're at the point now where Rift Herald is going to be coming up soon. Because you have Daption and Perry synced up on this bottom side, you could easily make a play, allow Sketch to be able to shove the wave in, and you can rotate him top to make a play for the Rift Herald. Oh, this is going to be risky for Golden Guardians to survive. The hook connects on the Violet, and they've got a bailout on top of him, but it's not enough. It is Perry picking up a kill at Faisal. Gets dove in the top lane. He will die. It's a trade across the map, one for one. Right, and him going down, he doesn't have TP. He's down for another 10 seconds as well. It is nice of GG to be able to answer back. Oh, Leo. Okay, okay, there's the dominance. There's gonna be last breath as well. Leo's got a lot more damage than you do, Ryoma, so you gotta be a little bit careful yep. when looking to fight against Croc. Especially now that the, he didn't, he still had the call of the Meek, full rage bar, Ryoma already used the ignite. And we're gonna get a replay of what happened top, but we saw the bot play happening. And Faisal, of course, as soon as Iconic shows up, he knows it's done. He doesn't yeah. even bother using the flash. And I honestly like the discipline because there was a good chance you were done to begin with. So it will allow Iconic to go for this bit of an invade, steal the red buff away. But you still have Faisal coming back to lane. You have Perry now who could potentially contest for that Rift Herald because especially look who's in the area, Daption on the Nautilus. And I think this is why we see su uh, support players go for this sort of pick to answer the Enchanters more often than not, Magical. Mm -hmm. It is for that roam potential. It is for the CC you can offer in other lanes, not in lane. Hey, Dan, I just thought about this. If we're, if EGP win this first game, mm -hmm. that means Sierra is the only one who could possibly rewrite. From oh no, we death. can't let that happen. Well, we have no say in this. You're Slip right. The little player. So what we'd have to, there has to be some sort of punishment then. 
Really? I don't. I don't think so. There as has as to be. someone who said two zero, exactly. I don't think. Did you there not should see be. the beard yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I am not dyeing my beard any color. But I don't have dye on me. I'm just saying there's got to be something. We got to keep it entertaining. Okay. You know what? Because Sierra is the only one who. Uh, is like so far right if that happens we'll let her decide even though that's probably a mistake all right that, uh, yeah? i like that can we, idea. Can we agree I, yeah, yeah. Okay. A, a handshake on that one i all definitely right. agree but here Perfect. we go back into the game itself iconic looks for a play in the bot lane but it's a good read from sketch and Dash. backing up wait they don't want to give over any more objectives especially to something like a diana that with these two kills it's already got that little bit of a snowball you want rolling with the wombo combo yasuo mid that's right i mean at least Iconic is snowballing. Ryoma certainly has not been, but he's been keeping up in CS, which is a big exactly. deal, partially because of Leo's roams, but also just because I think this is why we highlight this player, even in these situations where he is getting, uh, the enemy mid laner is getting the better of him. He's still able to keep himself up. Big thing I'm looking for now, Perry has the Rift Herald. He's a few options for where he wants to use this one. Heading top side tells me it's probably not top. He, or, or rather, it's not bot. It could be top lane because he's already pathing his way over there. Could be as Barry. Just gets scuttle crab first with that Rift Herald in hand like we talked about, but looks good nearby as well. Iconic, right there in the wing. So Perry instead, kind of like hovering around looking for a potential play on someone like Iconic, but instead might just get the reset. Yeah, I mean, with that, with the scuttle that it was just secured, he has the vision. He could recall and go bot, but he's actually going top lane instead. He wants to spend the gold. He's got that first mythic and is deciding that he would rather have that and then head towards this top side of the map. Looking at Tony Top, he is not dirt against Faisal, even with the slice of from Those boulders connecting forced the flash out of Faisal, but another Ooh. boulder side step by Faisal, barely surviving, but here is Iconic. This is Doomsday. He just gets a kill with the Hextech rocket belt. And it's just that easy. Faisal falls behind. We got to play, though. We got to play mid lane. That was a dominant pop, but look at that hostile takeover. It didn't really do much except for deter the future die that could have oh, come in from EGP. Ryoma's still alive. They got a lot of damage. Here's Iconic. Moon there ball huge in the back line. Leo, first casualty, and with the last breath on adaption, it forced out his flash. And here's Chime to pull him wow, back in Chime. for two kills. And they can look for more. Perry's barely alive on the other side. That is a big win for Golden Guardians Academy. And it's a big fight coming through here. Nicely executed there, especially with Iconic showing up in the end. And that is a lot of gold gone over here. And you're going to see it come through. I mean, Perry is on the way, but Chime is here as well. The thing with the hostile takeover, more than anything else, Magical, it buys time. Because look at the mini map yeah. here. Iconic is on the way. Now, Rayoma feels good about getting a little more aggressive. Violet is in the area. And there it is. The combo comes through. And Rayoma uses the whirlwind to get that last breath. And actually, my favorite thing about this, Chime flashes for the handshake to make sure Daption goes down. Exactly. Just grabs them, pulls them back in, so they pick up two kills for their efforts. It was well done on the side of Golden Guardians Academy. Got themselves some leads and gets Ryoma back into a position of power, having now slown down the side of Leo, who was, even if the CS was even, still had the two kills over Ryoma for that time. Now, I'd say the gold's probably exactly even between the two. Thing is, it's not. Uh, because of the gold because of the kills that happen on the other side of the map it's actually golden guardians who have found themselves ahead and this first oh, i'm just talking about ryoma and oh, oh. I, i'm not talking about golden guardians in general i yeah i know they have the lead i was gonna say but yeah so now the point is uh egp should be able to secure the dragon but but are they going to be able to secure their lives? The big question. Snapchat is still alive on the other side. Iconic goes in on his catch. Bailout, too. He'll finally fall in the it's fight. A big it's going to be a nice hostile takeover. The flash over the wall to survive. One for one trade with the dragon on the side of EGP with the re engage coming on onto Ryoma as he's split from the fight from the team, dashing over with the Night Tornado. Gets himself some space, and it's Violet oh, who the re-engages. They've got one kill, but now it's Violet who's out of position. With the sun coming in from Leo Perry as well. Woo. Tandem with two kills apiece for both sides. That was a messy fight, but still favors EGP. Now that one got scrappy, Magical, as you're seeing now on the top side. Tony Top is going to be able to get that first turret. That is a lot of bonus gold in his favor. So we see the replay here of what started all the catch out daption. They're trying to take him out, but all the CC he throws out buys time for the rest of the squad. Yes, he goes down, but it sets up for the two for two that goes on here. The bailout isn't enough. Perry still gets the kill, and he will chase Ryoma away, even though he doesn't get him. 
But I will give credit again to Ryoma and looking how much space he creates mm -hmm. for the team. He actually got would have gotten out of there despite the fact that Violet went to re-engage. And then Violet put himself there. Where it's like, yeah, sure, you get a one for one, uh, another one for one trade, so in total two for two. But Ryoma did enough. Ryoma is showing this veteran seed that we know him and how well he's capable of bouncing back in a game despite dying. Solo kill to Leo early into this game. He is now two one and two with even CS2 and Renekton, which is supposed to be a bad matchup for Yasuo. That's right, but when we're at the point, especially once he gets the shield bow, the fact that he has Ignite means Ryoma will be able to match Leo in the side lane, and I think that was the yep. biggest concern. You fall behind early, this Renekton will smoke you in that situation, but that is not the case. We have a fight. Action, Hex Flash, they got a lockdown on Ryoma. There's the combo! 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 Man, that always works out so well with Diana and Yasuo. Gets Perry both over the wall, but that's what you like to see. And Magical, this is what we expected when we saw this Diana Yasuo in the draft. Things were looking so good for EGP in the early game, but in the four versus four, which is what you have to consider right now before TPs are unleashed for top planners, things looked look really good for Golden Guardians. The combo is strong. You can see they are not afraid to pull the trigger when they find an opportunity. And it's what's gotten them that what's now a 4,000 gold lead. The big thing that's going to really save EGP in this game is the 5v5s. And like we yeah. highlighted in the drafts, Magical, the Kennen. Faisal, player we talk about, did so well in amateur last year, is the savior. Is going to be the savior with the ultimate. They're struggling right now with Barry looking for a play mid lane. Onda, Ryoma, and Chime. But just those two alone. Or a gank coming in from the jungler of EGP who are now invading, but they just can't find anything. There's nothing left for them to take. No, there is not. They're looking anyway. They do spot Ryoma. They might be able to catch him out. I don't think he knows they're there. Oh, he definitely knows. Now he, he knows. sees them. There's a flash available for Daption. Doesn't even want to bother. Just wants to grab those Krugs. Spider-Man out. They've got a turret succeeded successfully for the side of EGP. They can take that gold to the base. That is nice, because Sketch is going to be another one to look for later on into the game. He plays Zeri, of course, because later on, when you have that ultimate, that ability to kite so effectively with the extra move speed, that's going to be important to, one, and, and avoid that initial engage from Golden Guardian's composition and hope that you can get to that two-item part spike where Zeri really starts to do damage so that you can whittle down the members of Golden Guardian so that you can keep your team in this one. Helmet, Golden Guardian. Doing well for themselves. They got quite a gold lead over EGP. 17 minutes into the game, just shy of that. Plus, looking at the items they have across the board. Getting those spikes, the shield though, for Ryoma, who can now match and probably even win against Leo, as you talked about before. They uh, beat down. This is a matchup that should favor Renekton only if he's snowballing. Only if he's getting completely out of control that the Yasuo can't stand against him. Now, he certainly can now, Leo still will have value in these fights, but it's going to be by trying to ice not isolate necessarily, but get these stuns. Use the stun to be able to catch out someone like Violet. Maybe you can get the flank angle on the back line of Golden Guardians Academy, and that's probably what is going to be the best thing here when we talk about fighting around these objectives. And speaking of, we're 30 seconds from... Uh -oh. oh, wait a minute. Faisal, this isn't looking too good for yourself. Even with the slice of Maelstrom, look at the damage coming in from Ryoma, but it was Faisal doing a lot back as well. Tornado. Just shy, hitting its target. That was enough for Ryoma to gain control of the bottom half of the map. You can see it, he's already recovering. It's just Yasuo things magical, but now Perry and Daption might have a thing of their own, but it's tough. You know Faisal is forced away. He can TP, but guess what? No slicing maelstrom, big team fight tool, gone and out of the picture. So all you can do is clear some is. vision and hope you get a fight after. Uh, he TP'd into the bot lane, but too far away. Moonlight will connect onto two, but it was a flash with a hostile takeover. Perry's low. A Caspian Rain rains down upon his head to pick up a kill for the side of Violet. With three members still underneath this turret. EGP, they're th they have to be careful. They're calling over Faisal as reinforcements just in case. But again, no ultimate. So you don't have as much to fear from this cannon in this situation here. And it's tough. Now, EGP really started to fall behind here. They ha they can't play for anything like the Dragon Soul, or at least if they do, it's going to be Perry Lake, because Magical, we're 18 minutes, and the third Dragon of the game will come at 22 minutes. At this rate, EGP can't depend on something like that. They are going to have to try and force some plays here. 
and it's going to start around when the baron comes through you can still play to leo in the side lane on this renekton when he has that dominus available he can stun you up set up for parry to make a play and get a kill you just have to hope you don't lose too much on the other side of the map here because you know golden guardians they're going to be looking for just as much also worried because faisal the top lane player playing kennen into the nar hasn't had the best time iconic is made sure of it. That way, they don't have to worry about Kennen joining in these fights for some time, even with the rocket belt completed. We got to put on pause. There's going to be a TP behind. Oh. Will be Tony Top showing up. Oh, it's canceled. Oh, it's canceled. It was actually Faisal deep in the fight, going for the side of EGP. But oh, that's the combo. 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 That ain't Falco, boys. Because they got a double kill out of Iconic. Oh, man. Iconic managed to clutch up for his mid laner. Ryoma buys enough time to make it happen. And you can't help but think part of it was because of the hesitation. Well, and... Speaking of hesitation, there's none in this mid lane. Ketch was able to get the flash out of Violet and Chime over the wall. He goes. Getting a lot of damage poking out these members underneath the turret, but cannot actually find a kill. So EGP, despite the fact they started off a lot of those fights, gain no advantage. And this is, uh, they just can't find anything. They lose more on the other side of the map. Iconic, of course, who has the Rift Herald, is going to be able to get that second turret. This Diana, who is snowballed, just continues to roll on forward as the Herald will get a charge. No Moonfall, but he's so strong, he can just go oh, for man. it. That damage on the sketch forcing him away from his own turret is Iconic now. Caught in a bad spot. He's able to get away. Faisal doesn't have that slicing mail term. Used Cancel the TP from Tony Top. So a turret taken for the side of Golden Guardians Academy. And they continue to balloon this gold lead out of control. 7,000 they now have. It's a tough spot to be in. Evil genius prodigies. Things were looking so good for them in the early game. But one, Tony Top finding those individual advantages topside. And of course, I, Ryoma being able to hold on in this losing mid lane matchup has kept, not only kept GG in the game, but has allowed them to propel themselves forward now. So we're two minutes away from the third dragon of the game. Something that you desperately, desperately want if you're EGP. And even looking at EGP in this game, a lot of young players on their side facing off against some veterans in Ryoma, in Violet, Chime, Iconic, Tony Top. A lot of these players we've seen for some time. In fact, Tony Top, Iconic, graduating class of the 2020 scouting grounds compare that to Perry and Daption. they were part of the 2021 a little bit younger than their counterparts on the other side from scouting grounds it's kind of showing at the moment that golden guardians have had that experience they really are able to bounce back in such a great way to make sure that they've gotten this massive lead now with how strong they are you gotta imagine that they're actually in a position where maybe they could threaten the baron even though it is sub 22 minutes even though it, it is only been about a minute and a half since that Baron spawned, but right now it's just going to be about setting up that vision, keeping that one or keeping the side, the top side jungle of EGP nice and dark so they can't walk into it all willy nilly. And speaking of, Perry can't be here. No, he can't. Has to use the all over the wall just to escape from this Lagoon squad of Golden Guardians. With that use, you can see that Iconic is having a field day. Gaining control of lanes, gaining control of the jungle and the river that EGP can't really fight back again. Oh, Faisal. He's, wow, much, he's gone. There. Yeah, there's not much to talk about. That was about a magic there. trick. You know, oh, yeah. uh, now you see him, now you don't. You never seen that I movie? Mean, I definitely I definitely see him. He's okay. dead right there. Oh, yeah, you're right. You he's see, dead, you yeah, see yeah. the timer over his, uh, his character model. Yeah, that's a brutal flick. And yeah. honestly, Magical, it couldn't have come at a worse time because now they, I don't know if they'll actually go for the inhib. Okay, they will. But okay. the thing, the more, the thing I was more oh, thinking about no. was just the fact that we're four seconds away from the dragon. You have this yeah. bot lane pushed in. Supers are going to be coming in very, very shortly. Yep. And it means you're going to be able to easily take this dragon. You are potentially worried that EGP try and trade it for the Baron, but realistically, I think you're just going to take it. Wait. Exactly. Uh, Golden Gardens can take this too quickly. There's no turnaround time on the side of EGP to be able to get that Baron under the nose of Golden Guardian. Plus, with that, tur uh, with the tur with the inhibitor taken in the bot lane, that now sets up this Baron play for Golden Guardians. They will always have that lane pushing in to EGP and will force either Faisal or Leo to have to deal with it. It's tough. Faisal, especially the target of a lot of pressure in the side lane. 
It's gonna be the one to clear things out on the bottom side. He has teleport if something breaks out. He has the slicing maelstrom available as well. And we keep talking about it, Magical, but that's the thing we gotta be looking towards in these team fights. You need that CC, you need that moment to give the members of EGP time to put out the damage that they have right now oh, oh my the god flash that's again happening between ryoma and iconic iconic living up to his name on this diana he is looking iconic Daption is chased away by chime the supportal combat working out in golden guardian's favor as Perry's falling to violet and this is just brutal he, uh golden guardians they know they're so ahead magical they see openings they pull the trigger they'll commit flashes they'll commit every tool that they have and it has earned them a 24 minute baron egp they can't let this go lightly but they may not have a choice not at all they see the bear taken and keep in mind chime that's it they were fighting the whole time nice nor alt from tony top gains a little bit of space so they can get the kill for Violet and look for the rest of the members. They got the dive in coming in from Iconic and look at how little damage Faisal is doing at the moment. Even with Iconic taking pretty low, they couldn't pick up the kill. So instead it's a trade back unstoppable Iconic. And they just keep losing and losing and losing here, Magical. Evil Genius Prodigies are falling apart at the seams and it's starting to feel like this is going to be the end. We got 30 second timers on Faisal. Daption is out of the picture just yet. At the very least, we have another inhibitor that is going to fall here. And if EGP aren't careful, it's going to be more. Right now, they're clearing out the bot lane minions and super that was boarding into the base, but now they got the pick. They're easy looking. Easy auto parry with an ignite kicking as well. Even though on the other side, they were able to get the shutdown onto Violet. Keep in mind that Golden Guardians don't really care. They've opened up two lanes for themselves and they've got Leo split on the other side. And here's Iconic to join. He's eight and two on Diana. Has 10 stacks of that Magi's and make it more. He's got 12 in his inventory, 12 chapters completed and looking to close the book on egp in game one moonfall picks up a dominating score iconic they've got the kill underneath the nexus church daption the last surviving member but golden guardians <laughs> will take this game 26 minutes in patting the kdas along the way no they're not they just want to get victory and what a strong showing from one of the top teams in the academy scene here golden guardians although things did not go too great for them early on they managed to catch up just fine magical and a lot of it was just because of the fact that again we keep highlighting it ryoma this player who of course excellent rise but when that is taken away from him he has other options here and today it was the yasuo in a not great matchup he doesn't oh. fall too far behind. And once he gets once he gets that one item power spike, once we get past level six and the combos start coming through, the teamwork from GGA is just flawless. You can see it in how they team fight. You can see it in the plays they look to force. And you can see it in how they won this game. Honestly, it shows why they drew a lot of bans towards Diana, especially out of Iconic early in Ooh. the Academy Spring season. That was a great duo that they've clearly practiced many, many a time. Because once, like you said, once you got the item for Ryoma, once you were able to tag team, have the wombo combo with Diana, it was pretty much just clean League of Legends from that point. It was. That's the thing. And I mean, like, Iconic especially was particularly clean. Like, the fact is, you, you saw 12 stacks on the Magi's. I think he died once or twice, if I'm remembering twice. the KDA correctly. Twice, exactly. And he had so many kills, almost 10 to his name. And, and the thing is, too, again, it was post-6 soon as they were able to use those wombo combos use those ultimates things really started to swing against egp and faisal wasn't able to have that impact on the cannon partially because he spent a lot of time in the side lane forced to use his alt in really awkward situations not in the team fights i think we only saw it used once in a team fight situation and even then it did not work but well, Iconic spending a bit of time early into the game in that top lane as well to make sure that Tony Top was going to be fine. For sure. It really did set the pace for that game for Golden Guardians where they could bounce back Ryoma. Tony Top was already doing well. They put down Faisal so he could never join in those fights that you were talking about. And then also chime on his roam, trading space. A lot of things worked so well for Golden Guardians in that game. It did. And then, honestly, the Renata was a good look here. I've seen maybe three or four Renata games so far, and this is the first one I've seen from it. And it was well executed by Chime. Like you said, committing the flash to get the handshake, getting the stuns yep. off on the second proc. And, of course, good usage of the hostile takeover there. Great look for Golden Guardians Academy overall. And they take game one pretty convincing over Evil Geniuses Prodigies. We're going to toss it to a break. When we come back, we'll have our beautiful desk here. 
joining us once more. So make sure to stay tuned.